um, real estate business economic students, um, NCIS. Um, and Lakeisha services all the other majors. And um, today is our industry open house and we're super excited to have Chase Simpson from Deloitte. Chase is a partner with us. He's um, really committed to helping students be successful. And I'm sure you guys are gonna learn a lot from him about the accounting industry, um, about Deloitte particularly, and what their recruiting practices are. And so um, feel free to use the chat box to ask any questions. Chase may allow you guys to come off mute at some point. Um, so if you, you know, put on a, a collar shirt or, you know, look presentable, um, if you would like to turn on your camera, especially for those accounting majors who want to really impress Chase, um, go ahead and make sure that your camera is seen. Um, if you look professional, um, if not, we understand you guys are students, we're all at home in this virtual environment, but you do want to make a good impression and you do want to engage. So if you do ask a question off mute, be sure to turn your camera on if possible um, and utilize the chat box because I'll be monitoring it, Mario will see it and Chase will see it at some point as well. So at this time, I am going to turn it over to our dear friend, Chase Simpson from Deloitte. Sure. Thank you, Aaliyah. Um, well, happy afternoon. I think we can call it afternoon at this point um, to everyone. My name is Chase Simpson. I am one of our senior campus recruiters um, for Deloitte based out of our Atlanta, Georgia office. Um, and I kind of sit in an interesting place at the firm. Um, I sit in Atlanta, I recruit for our, specifically for our Atlanta audit practice. Um, on campus, I primarily support the recruiting efforts for our audit tax and risk and financial advisory practices there at Georgia State. Um, but I also have eight other schools that I recruit for. Um, and so kind of recruit across um, a little bit of the Southeast as well as, I guess you would consider it a little bit of like Texas and Oklahoma area as well. So. Um, I also, even though I sit in Atlanta at the firm, I technically am a Dallas um, audit recruiter, so I also support our Dallas, Texas practice, um, and so that's given me some unique insights into um, kind of really, really thinking about the firm in a much broader perspective. I think a lot of times when you come into a firm like Deloitte, we have 106,000 people in the U.S. alone. A lot of times you think to yourself, like, wow, that's a really big company, like how do I, you know, stand out? How do I really make myself kind of shine um, when you come to the firm? But I think when you um, come in, like I did three and a half years ago, um, I actually worked prior and elsewhere um, for seven years in nonprofit work. So, you know, one thing I would just say, as you all start to think about career opportunities, never let just one opportunity that maybe doesn't happen in your initial career think that that means for the lifetime that you won't have that opportunity. I applied to many internships and many jobs early on in my career, never in a million years that I think I would land a job with Deloitte. Seven years after I started my professional career, um, I was you know, kind of asked, if you will, by the connections that I made to apply for this opportunity um, here at the firm. So three and a half years later, I originally started in Atlanta. I only had two schools that I recruited at and essentially um, really kind of only covered the Atlanta office and the Atlanta practice. Through my time at the firm and through my work um, and, and people asking me if I would be willing to take on some additional responsibilities um, and kind of keeping an open mind to be totally honest. I knew I didn't love necessarily the travel aspect of the job all the time, but I knew that if I wanted to continue to move up at Deloitte that being a little bit more open-minded to learn more about the business and more about what we do was going to be an important part of that. So, um, you know, I always kind of raise my hand at opportunities that interest me um, and things that interest me. Now, three and a half years later, I cover nine schools, I cover three offices um, and have just a little bit more of an elevated and a national perspective in the recruiting landscape that we have here um, at the firm. For those of you that aren't familiar with what Deloitte does, just while I primarily sit um, in the recruiting space and obviously primarily recruit for our audit tax and risk and financial advisory practices, which are primarily focused around individuals who are accounting majors, you know, pursuing a CPA or individuals that maybe are MIS majors or um, CIS majors, anything like that, are typically kind of the, the areas or the majors that we focus on from a kind of the accounting side of the house. 
Deloitte obviously is a big four firm. We provide services in audit, tax, risk, and financial advisory. And consulting is an area that a lot of folks have an interest in um, that is a part of our business overall. Um, and we do recruit for consulting there at Georgia State. Um, but as you probably heard, I cover a lot of ground on the, the accounting side. So we have a separate recruiter who kind of handles all of the components for our consulting recruiting um, there at Georgia State, State specifically. So really what I wanted this today as a kind of thought through, you know, how did I want to tackle or how did I want to kind of talk to you all about what we do? I, I think the best thing for me is to be able to answer questions. Um, the thing that I've learned the most about um, kind of these sessions and things like that is a lot of times you all have the better questions than the things that I can tell you a little bit about Deloitte. Um, I love talking about Deloitte and I'm, I'm happy to share my own personal experience and all the fun things that I've gotten to do, but I really want to be able to be a resource for you all to talk about a your career aspirations or, or what you want to do. It doesn't even have to be related to Deloitte. I think I, as I mentioned before, am a little bit of a true testament that while I had applied to a lot of different things when I was coming out of college, um, you know, nonprofit was the path that took me on. And I did that for seven years. And that path and the connections I made through those, those job opportunities led me to being here at the firm. Um, and so, you know, what I would just say is, again, as you keep an open mind for job prospects and things like that, you never know where your path can take you. Um, and so, again, happy to answer questions about career aspirations or career paths, my own career path, advice, different things like that. So I'll kind of pause here, as I know I've, I've talked a lot. I'll pause here for any initial questions um, that you all have. So guys, feel free to come off mute or type your question in the chat box. Um, Chase has his chat open so he can see. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can definitely take the next 52 minutes to just talk for about Deloitte, but that won't make it fun for you all. So the, the more questions, we did a, a panel event yesterday and um, with some Georgia State students, and there were some really, really great questions. So um, definitely just encourage you all. The chat is an easy way to do it if you don't feel comfortable coming off of mute, but ready to answer any questions that you all have. Hi, my name is Channing. Um, I'm an economics major. I'm a senior. I was actually just wondering, I probably should have done some research on Deloitte before I got on the call, but is this um, uh, an accounting firm that um, uh, businesses you know, go to to do their accounting for them? Yeah, so that's a, a really great question. So um, really, you can kind of think about Deloitte in, in two different aspects. So to answer your question, it's a yes and. <laughs> it's Yes, companies hire us as um, an accounting firm to come in and do services around audit related items, which is a regulated, you know, obviously if you're a public company, so let's think about an Amazon as a public company, um, essentially, you know, the shareholders that invest in Amazon want to know that the health of the company and that the financials that they are saying that they are putting out there are verified um, and that the information that they are saying is true. Um, and so we get hired in to come in and audit their financials to make sure that that information um, is verified and true. From a tax perspective, we get hired in to, to really think about ways that we can help save companies money in an aspect of their taxes. Um, and so there's really some kind of consulting work if you think about tax work related to that. There is some consulting aspects to it um, from a tax perspective. Advisory, there's so many different things and I definitely encourage you all to look on our website related to advisory. There is obviously our internal audit and controls, which is much more of you know, what things are in place prior to our audit team going in and doing the audit. So that way the financials that are being spit out and the numbers that are being spit out are the right things um, or the right numbers. And then there is Cybersecurity, um, you know, we've got an like an economics team. So kind of mentioning what you're talking about. There's a whole kind of slew of teams that work within our risk and financial advisory space. Then on the consulting side, you really can think about consulting in really three primary areas. There's human capital consulting. Um, there is our strategy and operations consulting. 
and then there is um, our technology consulting. And so you've kind of got three different spaces of like mildly technical to like super, super technical. Um, and so again, those opportunities, you know, within consulting, I always talk about consulting and advisory in a little bit of a different way. If you think about, if we were going to launch a spaceship tomorrow, right, which Deloitte is not in the business to do, but this is just an example, right? Advisory is going to be mission control. Advisory is going to assess the risk relate, like associated with how, you know, let's think about the financials. Let's think about all the risk associated with launching this missile. That's going to be our advisory team. They're really assessing risk related items for a company. Our consulting practice would be the ones to go in and actually build the said missile, right? Again, we don't do that, but in, to give you an example of the type of work that they would do, consulting really goes in and kind of creates new. Advisory really assess the risk related to a process or something that we already do within a business. Um, so I'll say all of that to say, Deloitte does not have a product, right? We're not out selling a product to our clients. Our people all are our product. We are subject matter experts in certain areas related to audit, tax, advisory, or consulting that get sent into a company to help them solve their most tough problems and that typically need a third party to come in and assess the risk or come in and assess the issue and provide a recommendation for how to better their business overall. So hopefully that answered the question, Channing. Yeah, for sure. Can I ask one quick follow-up question? Sure, absolutely. Um, so does Deloitte, um, it, for the consulting and the advisory, do they only service uh, very big businesses or uh, what size firm do they usually work with? That's a, that is a really, really great question. Um, so ultimately it, it kind of depends on the client themselves, right? So um, we have large clients, we have small private clients. We've kind of got a range of, of clients overall. It's, it really comes down to the client budget and whether or not they want to, um, you know, spend the money on hiring us as a firm to come in and do that. What I would say is we've been pretty competitive in the marketplace overall. So, you know, basically meaning I don't think uh, because we are such a large firm that that means that we are overpriced or people can't afford us and only large companies that have a lot of resources can afford us. That's not the case at all. Um, we are, I think from a consulting standpoint, we are one of the only big four firms out there that kept their consulting practice throughout the fall of the economy several years ago. So when you think about that from a reputation standpoint, I think Deloitte personally, and you'll, right, you can Google and people will say, oh, Deloitte's the largest professional services firm out there. And that's a, from a Shears number standpoint. But part of the reason why that is, is because even during the fall of the economy, we kept our consulting practice. Many firms removed their consulting practice in order to you know, mitigate risk, which there were a lot of risk in keeping our consulting practice. But what that has done is really create this longevity of client relationships for our future. And, and I would just tell you right now, I know there's a lot of concern about COVID and, and the impacts of COVID around, you know, really any business, right? It's not just the Lloyd around any business, but I would say that we are having one of our best years overall from a standpoint of, um, you know, client engagements um, and, and winning new clients and things like that. And I think part of that is because A, we remain competitive in the marketplace and B, I think there's, there's a little bit of loyalty and brand reputation that people know that we didn't, you know, didn't remove our consulting practice and they've been clients of ours for many, many years. Um, and so, you know, I, I say all that not to sound boastful, but really to say, I think that <clears throat> it's part of our culture of building relationships and building quality relationships because that is essentially how we continue to keep the clients that we have. So I, I don't know if that fully answered your question or maybe over answered your question, but it was a really good one, Chaining. So thank you for asking. 
Other Hi, questions? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Swati. I have a question. Uh, so I am an MBA student uh, in the first year who has a concentration in human resource management. Do you think it's important to have an accounts background if you want to go in uh, in, in your organization to recruiting? Yeah. And I know, I think Swati, we've met before, so good to see you again. Um, you know, I, I think what I would say from a, from a human resource perspective, so you know, when I've talked earlier, I really talk about our four main businesses, right? Audit, tax, risk and financial advisory, and consulting. Deloitte still has a business operation internally that we have to do, right? So I technically sit in the human resources role at, as a part of our business. And so I primarily support our audit practice, but yet I'm still a part of human resources overall. So I'm not a part of the audit practice. I'm a part of human resources. And let me be clear, before I came to Deloitte, I had zero accounting knowledge and zero accounting information. So, you know, what I would say is having a, the business understanding of what we do, I think is important, right? Because it wasn't until I worked with some folks at Deloitte where I started to better understand kind of the, the firm talk about how they speak about clients, both internal and external. And some of those things that were really important that were very transferable in my interview, um, even though I was coming from a nonprofit background. So, you know, what I would say is, you know, you don't have to have any type of accounting, now, you know, accounting knowledge or accounting background in order to even come into human resources. I do think from a human resource perspective, it's helpful to have some experience in some other environment, whether that be a staffing agency, whether that be HR, you know, somewhere else. In my previous roles, I did have a little bit of HR work, you know, kind of tied into all of them. So that experience I was able to talk to in my interview, which I think is the reason why they were more inclined to pick me maybe over some of the other candidates that were also interviewing. So I do think it's important to have some of that, you know, experience per se to come into the business, um, but not necessarily anything related to accounting. I think once you get here in, in HR, um, I, in three and a half years, I know way more about audit. And uh, it was funny, I was on a call probably two nights ago, leading a presentation about audit innovation. And the partner who has been at the firm for 22 years, she messaged me after the presentation and said, man, by now, after three and a half years, you'd think that you're in audit already, you know, that you, you would have been in audit the whole time. And I was like, I have zero accounting background, but I can talk about audit. And I know about audit just from being around the business and, and really kind of getting educated. But beforehand, in, even in my interview, you know, they asked me some, some questions about audit related, you know, what I knew about the accounting world. And I was like, not really a whole lot. So that stuff you can learn. It's really about how you've been able, you know, from an HR perspective, building pipelines, interviewing individuals, those kinds of things were really important for the firm to make the best selection for, for who took the role. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, great question, Swati. And Swati, I'm happy to always serve as a resource. Um, you know, as you, if you see opportunities, I know we've talked about this before. Um, what I would just encourage for everybody, you know, if you're looking at opportunities in Deloitte, Many times, the way we do recruiting is a little interesting. We recruit from campus for the four primary businesses, audit, tax, risk, and financial advisory, and consulting. We recruit from campus directly. So you will see those positions posted on Handshake, and those are opportunities that I 100% encourage you to apply for if your skill set and your experience match what we're looking for from a qualification standpoint. If you fall outside of that scope and you're really looking for, like Swati's looking, probably for something in our human resources group um, or another area in our internal business functions, those are not going to be posted on Handshake. So you do have to go to the Deloitte career site and actually look at those opportunities there and apply for those directly too. Because, right, I serve as a campus recruiter. I am coming to campus to recruit for our four primary businesses. Those internal functions, they're not necessary. They don't have a campus recruiter who is like actively recruiting from campus. They post the position on, you know, on Deloitte's careers website. They will pull the applications that they see and they essentially will interview based on what they see 
from the qualifications. Um, and so I'm always helpful as a, as a campus recruiter, you know, I'm always willing to be a resource for anyone if it falls even outside of the scope of my work. Um, you know, I think Aaliyah and others on the call can definitely attest to, like, I've been at, at the firm for three and a half years. I've been recruited, the recruiter for GSU for three and a half years. So at this point, a lot of times people don't even know who the consulting recruiter is. So a lot of times I get, you know, questions about, hey, Chase, like, I'm really interested in consulting. I know you don't recruit for that, but can you forward this on to the consulting recruiter? And I forward that on to those folks. So, you know, anytime I can be a resource, I'm happy to do it. Um, for any, any role that you might see at the firm, typically I can at least forward your resume onto the, the appropriate recruiter for them to look at. Thank you so much. Yep, you're very welcome. Chase, you have several questions in the chat. Oh, um, I'm sorry. No, I, do you want to, let's see. Okay, so the first one I think is, what led you to working in the nonprofit field in the beginning um, and another opportunity or a referral from, an, from another? So I think what the question is, I'll kind of talk a little bit about um, what led me to working in the non nonprofit field. So um, during college, I was involved in a, basically a nonprofit organization that was a student-led, student-run um, fundraiser for an organization called St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which is based in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and so I had the opportunity to work on some fundraising efforts for the hospital um, and just kind of really fell in love with that. And so originally I had this whole idea that as a campus recruiter, before I had any idea that this job existed, I thought that I would do something very similar to being either an academic advisor or um, serving in some, some sort of, you know, campus activities board or something like that on a college campus. So Originally, I was fully set on, I'm going to go back to school after college for my master's and get it in higher education and, and go work on a college campus. Um, obviously, my path changed. When I graduated, I was afforded an opportunity to start working at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in their fundraising office, actually in Atlanta. Um, and so I worked there for about, uh, about a year before they moved me to Nashville. Um, and then I moved to Nashville and was there for several years, about four years before moving back to Atlanta um, and starting with United Way. And then I worked for United Way for only 10 months. And then I interviewed for the role at Deloitte um, and started with Deloitte in the fall of 2017. So, you know, I think it was, it, you know, it, my career in nonprofit really kind of was a happenstance. I was involved in the organization in college. They kind of were like, hey, we have this opportunity that we're looking for someone entry level, but it's in Atlanta. Are you even interested in moving to Atlanta? And again, at the time I was like, well, it's a career opportunity and something maybe I should look into. Um, and I thought maybe I'll do it for a year or two and then I'll go and get my master's degree after that. Um, but here we are, how many years later? Like 10 years later, and I have not gone back to get my master's degree. And now I work at Deloitte. Um, and so I mentioned a little bit of like thinking through, you know, building relationships and I don't want it to sound like who you know is how you're going to get your job because I don't think it's that at all. But I think you have to be purposeful about how you network um, for your career. Um, and so realistically for me, it was continuing to build relationships outside of just my company. I think a lot of times when you get into a job, sometimes you get in the, the rhythm and groove of things, much like you do even at school, right? And you kind of get head down doing your work and you're probably doing it really well, but you might look up and think, oh, well, three years have passed by or five years have gone by. And if you haven't done the work to also build your network outside of just your job, then you have to think about that. And I think it's important to really think about, you know, nonprofit has always been a big part of who I am. I never thought I would come to a for-profit company. What I found at Deloitte is Deloitte is super intentional about what we do in the communities in which we live and work. And we are very, is something that's important to who we are as a firm. But I also knew I was going to have an opportunity to benefit from the resources of a large organization. And the growth I was going to have was going to probably be exponential in comparison to what I was getting in. Um, the nonprofit world that I was in. So, and I can tell you in the three and a half years that I've been at the firm versus the seven years that I was in nonprofit, 
I probably have grown four times the amount in three and a half years than I did in a seven year period um, of that. But I'm super still grateful for my nonprofit experience because it led me to where I'm at at Deloitte today. Um, and so those are just some some things I think that that might answer your question about kind of what led me to the nonprofit field and then kind of what really um, got me here to Deloitte. Did that did that answer your question, Jaden? Yes, it did. Perfect. Um, okay, so the next question is, do you typically look to hire undergrad students for internships or is the opportunity open to grad students as well? The, um, that's a really great question, Nicholas. So typically we um, do look for, it, it, it depends. Okay, let me, let me first say that. For audit tax and advisory, our internships are primarily for individuals that are undergrad students that are typically a year away from wanting to start full-time. So if you can think about that, our internships, so if we, let's give an example for summer 2021. For summer 2021, if you intern with us in summer 2021, you would be done with school and ready to start full-time by May of 2022. So that gives you some perspective of how that works. Now, our summer 2021 internships were filled in spring of 2020. So it's almost, you gotta start thinking a little bit far in advance for our opportunities. Now, the other thing, consulting is a little bit different. Consulting for summer 2021, they recruit in fall 2020. So they recruit just almost like an academic year before you would intern, right? But they're still looking for, traditionally looking for undergrad, that would be looking to go full-time at the end of 2022. So kind of a similar process. For consulting, there is some nuances. Um, they do have advanced degree recruiting, but I think at Georgia State, they only primarily recruit for undergrad um, recruiting for internships or full-time. Let me say that. <laughs> that. I know that probably doesn't answer your full question, Nicholas, because it's a little bit nuanced for the different businesses, but for audit tax and advisory, it's a pretty laid out process across the board. For consulting, a little bit more fluid in the sense of they recruit intern and full-time, and it's typically the fall semester before you're looking for that opportunity. Um, the next question is from Taylor. It looks like, how is the interview process? Um, do you want the pre-COVID or the in-COVID answer? We can, I can give you either one if you, you want what, either one. I don't know, Taylor, if you want to come off mute and say if you want pre-COVID or what it's like right now. Um, both is fine. Okay, so pre-COVID, the interview process was, and again, it, it differs by business. So if you think about audit, tax, advisory, consulting, it's going to differ a little bit. Um, for most of our businesses, pre-COVID would have been traditionally a campus-based interview, which would have just basically been, we typically would have either come to RCB or you would come to our office, given that it's typically a block away from, <laughs> from campus. So one of the two, you would come to our office. Typically, it's two 30-minute interviews back-to-back -back with a partner at the firm or a senior manager. So one of the two is typically um, for that, and it's typically two 30 minute back to back. Then if you make it through that round of interviews, there's a second round interview that's typically 30 minutes, and then an offer would be extended at the end of that process. So it's fairly quick, if you will, from a standpoint of, it's really only three interviews. For consulting, they do a case study, um, and so that's something that is a little bit different in the consulting practice and um, in their interview. And I am not fully well versed on how that process works as it is always a little bit confusing to me how they even get to the case and then like what happens in the case. So just know as a part of their process, they have behavioral and case study as a part of their interview process. For Advisory, um, it's kind of similar to consulting. They do a little bit of um, both behavioral and 
um, like a scenario based interview where a partner or senior manager would read off a scenario and you would react or respond to the scenario and how you might solve it or provide a solution to the problem. So that's all pre COVID. I'll say for my interview process to get to where I'm at, I had to do, let's see, I did two like video interviews and then I did three in-person partner interviews for 30 minutes each. So mine was a little bit more intensive than probably what anyone else's is. Um, but that's just to get, given the kind of the role that I play and how I work with several partners across the firm, um, that's kind of where that was. In COVID interviewing, everything's virtual. So it's uh, typically right now, I think what we're doing is um, it's really two 30 minute interviews on some, our platform is called Hire View, much like Zoom, much like Skype, much like Microsoft Teams, whatever you use, you're going to be in a one on one interview for 30 minutes. And then you will either log out of that meeting and then log into a new one and then another 30 minute interview. So same type of process, if you will, it's just everything's been converted to virtual and we're trying to streamline or condense the process overall. One thing I would just say, a lot of firms or a lot of companies are moving to this just from an HR, from an interview perspective is the virtual interview process um, it's, or the pre-recorded interview process, which I had to do during my interview. It's something that, again, a lot of companies are moving to. Um, so you, like I as a recruiter, would go on and record questions and say, you know, the first question might be, tell me your name and a little bit about yourself. And that might be the first question. You're given 30 seconds to prepare and then two minutes to respond. And you are, once the two minutes starts, you are recorded for two minutes and then it submits your answer. And then you will, then it goes to question two. And question two might be, uh, tell me a little bit about why you're interested in this role and why you think you would be a good fit for the role. You get 30 seconds to prepare, two minutes to respond, and it submits your answer. Some companies with the technology that we use, you can go back and re-record a question or an answer if you don't feel like you were doing it well enough. For us, many times it's you get one pass through it and then it's kind of done. What I would highly recommend if you do a pre-recorded interview, most of them have practices and it true, like, I can't say this enough. It truly proves who practices and who does not practice in those. Also, there is a timer that is like counting down two minutes all the way down to the last. And you would be shocked at how many people just get cut off mid sentence. And that, like, when there is 10 seconds left, it is like flashing on your screen telling you like, please stop talking, please stop talking, please stop talking. And people still, there are so many interviews I go to review and I'm like, well, I didn't get the full thought of what you were about to say because you didn't wrap up your thoughts. So part of that really is more about how do you respond in those types of situations? Sometimes, and I'll say this, even in my role, sometimes I may only have 10 minutes with a partner. They've been here for 20 plus years they are not charging me for their time because they are not working with a client, but like they have way more important, you know, demands than talking to me most days. And so if I only get 10 minutes, I need to make sure that my 10 minutes is the most useful. And so I've got to get a lot out of that. So that pre recorded interview process is really more about a are you able to take a, a hard question, really make a nice little package, deliver your story, deliver your answer and wrap it up and be done, right? And that, we're, what I would say is most often, we're not looking for perfect answers, but we are looking for folks who can articulate a response and really provide it within the two minute timeline. Um, so those, that's kind of the interview process. I'm happy to answer any follow-up questions to that, but um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense um, of that. So the Next question um, is from Rohan. It looks like, what are some of the biggest challenges new hires and interns might face at the firm? This is a phenomenal question and one that I've actually been dealing with a lot this week. Given that we are virtual, our interns have been here for now nine weeks as of this week. Um, and so they've gotten a pretty intensive internship, many of them from an audit and, and tax perspective, 
we're in busy season. If you've never heard about busy season related to accounting or audit or tax, it's pretty taxing, if I can say that. Um, so our interns are working from home anywhere from 50 to 60 to 70 hours a week. Um, and so that's a lot, right? And, and many of them are adjusting and adapting to going from a school schedule, which doesn't seem to always necessarily be a full, full schedule, to then a full work schedule where you're having to be up at 8 a, 7 30, 8 a.m. and you've got to be on video and you've got to be powering through your work and you're working until you know later into the evening. So what I would just say is um, I think some of the things that interns are challenged with most. If you're going into the accounting field, Excel skills are hands down, like practice that because you will use that in every way, shape or form of your job. And I, our interns are like, I just wish I would have like known the tips and tricks or like the keys to be able to do my work more fast and efficient. The other thing that I think is really hard for folks to adjust to and something that I was challenged with when I started at the firm, even being in a professional environment for seven years prior, is really adapting to um, the pace of work. There are some really, really, really intelligent people who work here at Deloitte. And for someone like myself, I was even intimidated of like, there's a lot of meetings that I sit in where I'm like, I am not the smartest person in this room. And there are a lot of really, really smart people here. Um, and so what that did for me was challenge me to get better. And honestly, sometimes it took me a little bit longer to get the hang of that. So I may have to spend a little bit longer of a time at night when everyone else is, you know, logged off for the day, digging through data and putting together our presentation for a big meeting for the next day or whatever the case may be. And some of those people could whip that up and you know, 20 minutes and they have a great presentation and they've got all the data they need. It takes me a little bit longer um, and that's okay. But I've been able to grow into that as I've been at the firm. Um, and I think asking questions, a lot of times people are intimidated to ask questions. You got to come in and you got to be willing to ask some questions to make sure that you have clarification and a baseline understanding of what's expected of you in the work that someone's asking you to do or in just your job in general. Um, and so I think asking questions, you know, adjusting to the pace of work. Um, and the last thing I will say that I think you all are probably getting a really, really good dose of that we are all, everyone's trying to even accommodate even more for now is the email influx, right? I think as a college student, you never really had to, you paid attention to email, but you probably didn't pay attention to it as much as you are now. Um, and email communication, if you think it's a lot, kind of in the college space and what you're doing on campus in the working space that used to a lot of a lot of times that is our biggest form of communication so when you think about the influx from covid it's even been a lot more of all right now i've got to figure out how do i manage my inbox how do i manage what's expected of me you know and somebody's asking tasks of me or things for me to do and how do i manage that and and work that into my day that i've got coming up with calls events or things like that so you really have to kind of, you know, I, I always say, if you're a student that asks a question about work-life balance um, at the firm, you know, what I always say is there is no balance. I, there is no way that I've achieved perfect balance. What I have achieved in my three and a half years is figuring out how I make work and life fit into each other into the 24 hours a day that I have by making sure that I get enough sleep and making sure that I take care of the things that I got to take care of. Um, but you got to figure out how those things work. And I was telling Aaliyah when I first logged on today, you know, this has been one of the busiest weeks that I've had at the firm. And I've probably worked, you know, three 14 hour days in the last three days. Um, you know, but this is one week of, you know, however many weeks we have in a year, 26, right? Um, and so while this week is really busy, I'm having to accommodate and adjust for a lot of things, you know, and having to manage my inbox. And it, again, it's just taking me a little bit longer to get through all the things that are required of me this week versus what was required of me last week. But I also know that next week, I have a pretty lighter week because I'm knocking a lot of this stuff out this week. Um, and so again, I think it's just all about how you work, what's gonna work best for you and how you make those two things fit. Um, so those are kind of the, I think some of the biggest challenges um, that new hires or interns can face at the firm. 
you know, with some time, I think that you really learn to manage it, but um, it can be a little overwhelming when you first start out. These are all really great questions. Um, okay, so the next question is from Atif. What are the biggest challenges and technological advancements that your industry faces that future employees and interns should learn about? That is a really, 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 really great question. Um, you know, I, I think when people think about the work of Deloitte, we are a firm that wins awards for being the most innovative. We are a firm that wins awards for things of staying kind of in the, the forefront of technology innovations or technology advancements and things like that. Here's some things I would just encourage you to do. We have on our Deloitte website, there's like a whole insights. You can go to like Deloitte insights and there's articles that are published regularly from Deloitte about how we see things changing in the next couple of years, how we see industries changing, how we see technology changing. And what I would say is, again, there are people who are way smarter than me who are able to kind of put into words where we think the future might take us in the next couple of years. Some things I would just say that you probably, um, I don't know about challenges, but I think technological advancements, we need people who are naturally curious about technology, who can understand how technology works, because technology is not going to take our jobs. AI is not going to take our jobs. But I think as anyone can probably know, over the course of the years, technology changes the way we do our work. And so with that, you know, our workforce, we have not reduced our workforce in several years. We've actually continued to grow our workforce, even as technology has advanced. So, you know, when people say the argument about AI and things are going to take jobs, you know, I think you really have to think about it in a different way because it, it may take some jobs, but it's just requiring a different skill set for some of those jobs, right? And so if you can think about how can I be naturally curious about technology? How can I really think about how technology is used in companies? You know, <clears throat> I was laughing about this the other day. Like we just implemented a whole new applicant tracking system over the summer in the, in the midst of COVID, which couldn't have been probably a more worse time to do it, but we did it, right? And so that technology is now something like I am having to learn how we do it. And the firm is definitely teaching us how to do it, but there are things that I think I could have probably been thinking about related to you know, HR specific technologies that are coming out that the firm many times is already doing testing on before it rolls to me, right? So there's things that I probably could have been researching of like, what are the latest HR trends? What are the latest trends in technology? What are like, think about what kind of industry or thing you're wanting to do. And honestly, like a simple Google search will allow you to start seeing the different things that are coming out. By the time new technology is rolled to me as an employee at the firm, A, I know I'm going to get trained on it, but there are probably things that I could have been way more prepared for or ahead of the curve had I done some research on that. So what I would just say is, as you're thinking about, you know, moving into a certain career path or moving into a job, A, I would ask that question in an interview because that's a great question just overall. If I would just say like, as you interview with any company asking, you know, what are the techno technological advancements that your industry faces or that future employees should know about? That's a phenomenal question that I would be blown away from if somebody at a, a collegiate level asked me during an interview. So I would definitely write that question down. It's just like, I'm going to put that in my back pocket as something I can use to ask in a, an interview process. Um, but I, I just think that really taking the time to think through what you might want to do and, and really what are, um, as technology continues to advance, that you're really thinking through how might my, my skill set continue to adapt to the technologies that are coming into play. Because realistically, the more versatile you are in your skill set, the better aligned you will be from a career standpoint. So what I, I mean, and, and any company is going to train you on technology. They don't expect you to come in and know how to use all these technologies per se. 
Um, but there's always buzzwords. Some buzzwords right now are Tableau, Power BI, you know, all those kinds of things right now that we can think about. Those are buzzwords. There likely was three years ago, some information coming out about blockchain and Power BI and things like that, that you could have read up on to be more prepared for um, those things. So I just encourage you as you're thinking about career paths, really do some research on the front end of what things are impacting that um, industry or impacting that specific job. Because likely, if you think about what's impacting that industry or what's impacting that job, a technology is likely going to be created to make that job more efficient or make that job even better. So I'll kind of stop there. I know that's a long-winded um, answer for that. Um, all right, next question is about, what about the international students? Do you sponsor work visa for students who intern during their CPT, OPT period? Um, so the answer is yes, um, we do sponsor students. For our risk and financial advisory practice, um, it is a limited, they are doing limited sponsorship opportunities. And for our consulting practice, they do not currently offer any sponsorship um, for either one of those businesses, but for audit or tax, um, we do offer um, sponsorship. Typically in the job description, I believe that it will say open to, um, open for sponsorship or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so just make sure that you're always keeping a look on what the qualifications are for the job to make sure that your kind of background aligns with, um, with it. So that's a good question. Um, all right. Any other questions? I think that those are all the questions in the chat. So I've powered through most of those. Um, any questions from you all? Any other questions for the chat or to come off mute? These have been really, really great questions. I was going to say, Chase, this has been phenomenal. Um, I think the students are getting a lot of out of um, everything that you're sharing with them. You're giving them a lot of valuable information. I hope you guys are taking notes um, for my BCom students. At this point, I want you to make sure that you get that screenshot um, with Chase's uh, nice face <laughs> and his Deloitte office background. Yeah, right. Um, because that's what you're going to need for BCom credit. And I do see a student who just um, turned her camera on, so she may have a question for you, Chase. Perfect. Hello, my name is Cam, and um, I just want to ask, like, when you're working, when you're an actual employee at the company, you usually get, like, let's say, example, like, insurance benefits and stuff. So as an intern, do you also get the same benefits, or is it just less, or you don't get none at all? It's a great question. So as an intern, you are an hourly employee, technically, so you do not, you're not um, eligible for our benefits, um, per se, but um, you know, when you start full time, typically you are eligible for um, those benefits. Um, you know, as an intern, I can just, I, I think while you weren't eligible for benefits, there are some, from a pay standpoint, to be totally transparent, we do pay very well hourly. Um, so, you know, if you were in need of some of those like benefits in order for different things, I would anticipate that based on the pay, you would be able to um, accommodate for that in a budget to pay for um, those things. But those are really good questions. I mean, and I will say this, like from a benefit standpoint, I know if you're thinking about benefits, like I know it wasn't something I was initially thinking about, but now obviously being in my professional career and, and thinking about benefits overall, the firm, like typically when you join a company, you may have like, let's say Blue Cross Blue Shield and Blue Cross Blue Shield may give you like two different options and you have option A and option B and you have to pick from those for whatever you think is gonna be best for you and your family um, or your spouse. At Deloitte, they're like, here's Blue Cross Blue Shield, here's Farmers, here's Aetna, here's this, here's this, here's this. And there's like eight different companies and under each of the eight, they all have, multiple opportunities and options underneath for you to determine which one is best. One of the, the best things, and I, I say this, you know, just because this is something that I appreciate is being at a firm like our size, a lot of times you don't think about the resources that are available to you until you're in a situation when you're like, oh, I need that. When we think about benefits, we have an entire like comparison system where you can basically like 
pick one plan and compare it to another and compare it to another. And it'll tell you all the details of like, here's how much is going to come out of your paycheck. Here's how much you're going to pay at a doctor's visit. Here's how much you're going to pay for this. And it tells you all those things. And a lot of companies, you have to kind of do a little bit more digging to better understand all of those components. But we have a whole interactive system online that's like built and tailored specifically for you as an employee. So that's one thing that I just, um, again, encourage you all. And, and, you know, I didn't appreciate it maybe as much. Like coming from the nonprofit field, I was like, there's so many things at the firm. Like there are so many resources that sometimes it's overwhelming because there just is so many different things. Um, but I think that you you kind of learn to navigate all of that once you kind of get in and get your you know feel for how the work is going to be done and, and things like that. I always think about coming to the firm, um, like think about when you started college, right? You don't know everyone and you don't know everything and you don't know where all the resources exist. But as you get into your major, as you get into classes, as you build your network, all of those things, like that all starts to go from you feeling like I'm just one single person on this really large campus at Georgia State to then I'm starting to better build my network, whether that be with my professors, whether that would be with other students for, you know, group projects or study groups and kind of all the different things really start to build on each other. And by the time that you finish school or graduate, you're like, oh, I have a much larger network than I really even thought about and all the resources that I didn't really think that I needed or used in my four years like were available to me because I went to a school like Georgia State. So that's something that I think I always try to like relate it back to that experience of you're, I'm never going to know all 106,000 people that work at this firm, but when I do need something or when I do you know, have a need. I know that we have a resource that's out there for me. I just have to maybe do a little research to figure out where it is, or I just have to ask the question. We have a great resource of, it's called 1-800-DELOITTE. You can call it at any point and they literally like have people, you know, night and day that can answer your questions about like, hey, I am, you know, I'm having a baby and I need to, you know, learn more about maternity leave. Can you tell me about that program? And like, someone is on the line and just basically like can pull up the information and tells you all about it. So that part I think is just really nice to have at our fingertips too, from a resource standpoint. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions? We've got probably about seven minutes left. Um, let's see, I got two questions in the chat. What about computer information systems majors? What opportunities are available um, in terms of internships or recommendations? So it kind of depends on when you're graduating for computer information systems. I would say you'd be eligible for risk and financial advisory opportunities or our um, consulting opportunities. So either of those would be great things for you to look at. Again, I I also just want to stress this to, to everybody on this call. Handshake is going to be your best friend while you are still in school at Georgia State. If companies are recruiting for Georgia State students specifically, they will post it on Handshake. Now, I know that there's the caveat for like internal components and in businesses at Deloitte where we don't have a recruiter, but like for opportunities that they are looking for a specific major group or they are looking for Georgia State specific students, they will post on Handshake. So I, I, and I can't stress like maybe check it once a week just to see what new opportunities have come available. There are times where we at Deloitte will only post it for seven days. We'll post it on a Sunday and we will have it expire by Saturday and that will be it, right? And we take what applicants that we have in that short period of time and we will pick for interviews and we will do that. A lot of that depends on our business, right? Our business is also ever changing. So there are times where leaders come to us and say, hey, I need three more, you know, I need three more new hires for to start in May or June. Well, we didn't anticipate that. So we didn't hire for it last year. Right. And that's a on March 4th, I may get that email and they may say, make it happen in the next couple of weeks. So we have someone ready to start in May. Great. That's a great business need and an opportunity for students to apply for um, an interview. But a lot of times. If you don't regularly check Handshake, you're not going to know about the opportunity because I'm going to post it 
We're going to take the applicants, we'll review the applicants, and we'll do interviews, and we'll make selections from there. So just know that companies are, um, sometimes if they're in a tight turnaround for things, they are going to keep a shorter period and window on Handshake. So check every week, check on Mondays, check on Fridays, whatever you want to do. Um, but that's the best way to see new opportunities that are out there. So whether that be a Deloitte opportunity or other opportunities, companies are, and especially now, I think in the world of COVID, if I can't stress this enough, again, the business is continuing to change. Our needs are changing almost every single day. So with that change comes an adjustment in how, what our needs are for full-time hires or what our needs are for right now. Um, and the best place for us to go is the handshake. We post it on as you know, a couple different campuses that we want to recruit students from, and then we will see what um, applications we get and we will pull from there. So make sure you utilize Handshake. It can be your best best friend in that aspect um, for opportunities. So, you know, Gabrielle or Gabriel, I would just say um, highly recommend just keeping an eye on Handshake. Deloitte specifically, look at consulting or risk and financial advisory. Our summer 2021 opportunities are full at this point, but you could look at 2022 opportunities. Um, all right, another question. If I applied to Deloitte for an internship recently, I should be getting a message this weekend about whether or not I have an interview. Uh, Taylor, what I would say is it depends on the, the specific position. So for audit, tax, and risk and financial advisory, the answer is yes. If it is a consulting opportunity, I can't speak to what their process is because it's gonna be just a little bit different than how we do things. So if it is audit tax risk and financial advisory, then you will know by next week. I would say by next Friday, you will know one way or another. Great question. And for putting me on the spot. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Chase, uh, really quickly before we leave, yeah. um, you were speaking about the importance of utilizing Handshake. And um, a lot of times students will have a really, really you know nice LinkedIn profile, but they yep. won't fill out their handshake profiles. Can you speak about the importance of filling out and completing your handshake profiles for recruitment opportunities? Yeah, I, I think you all have to remember, right? I, I know the, the impact of COVID on you all has been a challenge, um, but as I mentioned before, I recruit at nine different schools and the influx that I have seen from the nine schools that I recruit at of just people interested in job opportunities and trying to find job opportunities. I'm getting, I'm getting LinkedIn requests. I'm getting handshake messages. I'm getting emails. So just know whatever you can do to best set yourself up where I don't have to do additional work is going to be better for you, right? At, the, at many companies, we have many qualified people who apply for our opportunities. The people who position themselves the best way are people that I do not have to do a ton of additional digging to try to figure out like, are you truly qualified for this internship? When is your graduation date? What's your GPA? All those things. To be honest, if I have candidates that are already putting that information in front of me and are filling out their handshake profile, you know, and, and communicating from that aspect, right? Because on handshake, when you apply to the job, I can just click your name and it goes straight to your profile and I can easily look at it. And if it's there, it's there. If you're like, I got to dig through LinkedIn or I got to dig through my email to find your transcript, to be honest, sometimes it's like, all right, I'm in a tight turnaround. As I was telling Aaliyah this week, like we had a national application deadline on Sunday. We have to have all applications and resumes reviewed by Saturday and communication ready to go on Monday of who, who we're interviewing or not. So a lot of that are by next week is what I would just say. But like, that's a lot of people to review all in one week. So the people that I have to spend less time on are probably getting a higher, a little bit of a higher priority in my book because they've done all the things necessary for me in order to position themselves. So Aaliyah, to your point, it's super critical. And I think that, you know, everyone should update it as much as they can with the information. Um, what I would also say is, especially for these virtual career fairs that have been happening, our professionals who are not recruiters, right? So think about people, I, I'm in Handshake often daily right but for our professionals they don't really interact in handshake they have handshake accounts now because they had to use them for these virtual career fairs making it easy for them to find you and to find your information is also super helpful if they had a 10 minute meeting with you at a career fair 
and they can easily log back in and click your name and see all your information. To be totally honest, like that's going to go even longer than having that perspective from me. So definitely important, Aaliyah, good, good thing to bring up. Thank you so much, Chase. All right, guys, at this time, you are dismissed. Make sure you get your screenshot to upload for BCom. I just want to take a moment to thank Chase for this awesome industry um, secrets reveal. That's what we're going to call it from now <laughs> on, Chase. There you go. <laughs> industry secrets reveal moving forward. Um, you know, PowerPoints are great, but sometimes just that one-on-one -on -one conversation and where students can ask questions in a, in a safe and open environment and not feel intimidated or judged um, is really, really helpful. So thank you so much for this time we really appreciate you as always and, and i will me, see you on accounting recruiters day <laughs> yes and i'll put in my i'll put my email in the chat so if you all have any questions or need anything feel free to reach out to me there awesome sounds good thank you so much again chase we appreciate you um thank you students for logging on we appreciate you as well have a great afternoon guys awesome thank you bye-bye